Today, I'm going to show you a video editing workflow in Premiere Pro. Just follow around and you will see how I get a video done from start to finish. Step number one, create your media. Film your footage, film your B-roll, get the graphics, the music, all the assets you will need to put together that video. An important thing when you're filming your data is to make sure everything you film has the same format or at least close enough. So if you're going to do a video in 4K, you want to film in 4K, you want to also film your iPhone uh, B-roll or your GoPro B-roll or whatever it is you're filming with, everything in 4K in the same format so that you can all bring them into the same sequence and not have too many issues. You also need to look at the frame rate. So if you're filming in 29.9, don't film the other one in 60 unless you really intend to do so for a specific reason. I would always recommend film at the highest possible quality you can according to your camera, your iPhone, whatever it is you use, it's really important to have the best quality. Same thing with filming your screen on your computer. Just try to you know, get those settings at the highest possible level. It's always better to downgrade. Once you have all these data collected, you need to put it all neatly on your computer in different folders. Step number two, new project. How to create a new project in Premiere Pro. Now we're going into Premiere Pro and starting a new project. If you don't have Adobe Premiere Pro, go to the Adobe website, get your seven day trial. Adobe Premiere Pro is an excellent editing software. When you start your new project, you need to find a location where you're going to put your videos. I usually purchase two external drives. If it's a big machine, I'll use a Drobo. If it's a laptop and I'm moving around, I'll usually use external drives. So these are Lassies, uh, they're five terabytes. I have one where my data is going to be located and the other one is going to be syncing that data so that every hour I get this data copied into this drive. That's because drives fail and you lose your data and it happened to me one too many times. It's a nightmare. And I never want it to happen again, but I know it will. So please make sure you sync it to a cloud, sync it to an external drive, sync it anywhere you want, but make sure you have a copy as soon as possible. I also recommend if you're going to use drives is to really pay attention to the cables, to the connections you use. You do not want to edit video on a USB port. You want to use Thunderbolt or at least USB-C because it needs to be fast enough to be able to play in real time. Otherwise, you're going to be rendering everything is going to stall and you're not going to be able to edit. So remember, two external drives or a cloud and a drive and Thunderbolt or USB-C in order to get good decent speed. If you use a Mac, you want to be rendered in Mercury Playback Engine GPU Acceleration Metal. This is important for your rendering and playback. This is the way it's going to work the best with a Mac. So make sure you use that. Use timecode. Audio samples is fine. And HDV is fine. So you have your source, your program, your project, and your timeline. The first thing you're going to do when you have a new project is to bring in your footage. Step number three, import and organize your assets. You're now ready to bring your content into Premiere Pro. You can ingest, you can go into your browser or you can drag your clips. I usually drag my clips, it's much faster. You want to clean up your folders on your browser. So you want to make sure you have your bin set up. So I usually have a bin for graphics and animations, pictures, clips and drafts and music and my assets. I have some of my assets in the library and some of my assets, I just drag them and make sure I put them all in one place. Number four, create a sequence. So now I'm going to show you how to go from 
having all your clips together into producing a sequence that matches your format and that has everything ready for you to get started. To create a new sequence, you can do File, New, Sequence. As you can see, it's Apple N. So you click Apple N and you get your new sequence. And then you have all these settings available. Let's say you want to, you're filmed in 4K, but you want to edit in 1080p. Boom, you come here, you drag your clip, and it will tell you it doesn't match the sequence settings. So keep the existing settings, we'll make it so that it doesn't fit. So then you come here and you go to set to frame size. Do not use scale to frame size because otherwise it crunches your video. Uh, I'll show you the difference. Set to frame size. Now, if you look at the clip, it's at 50%. So I can actually move it back, right? And it's, if I'm at 100%, I'm still at 4K. However, if I come here and I do scale to frame size, now you see it's at 100%, so it totally crushed down the 4K into 1080p. So you definitely don't want to do that because then you don't have the extra quality of the 4K anymore. So don't do that. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. I'm going to close that. Now, in order to match your camera settings, I think the best approach is to just either drag your clip into the timeline or come here and say new sequence from clip. So I'm just going to go like this. Boop. And that's how I get my sequence that matches my clip. And so if you come here, you will see that everything matches. See, it's 3840 by 2160. And where is the frame rate? 29.97. So everything matches. So the camera clip and the sequence match, and that's really where you want to be. I'm going to show you some shortcuts that I think are awesome on the sequence. And once you have them in your belt, you're going to use them all the time and they're going to make your life a lot easier. Apple Plus will increase the size of your video channel. So plus, minus. I'm just pressing the Apple, plus, minus. And then you can do the same thing for the audio. You use the option, plus, option, minus. And then if you press just plus, it just lengthens your timeline and minus shortens your timeline. Apple minus, option minus, okay? When you start editing, you usually want to have the audio really wide because that's a very big visual help to know where you start speaking and where you stop speaking or where your music starts. It's really important to look at the audio wave. Your video tracks should be neatly applied. I usually put my main video and audio on the very first tracks. And then if I have two or three different shots of myself, like let's say right now I'm filming myself by three different cameras, I'll use camera one, camera two on track two, camera three on track three. And I will put the track that I'm thinking of using the most on the highest level, be track three, because I know that that's the one I'm going to see uh, because of the way Premiere Pro looks at the footage. So that's the one that I want to look at the most. And when I don't like something, if I'm looking away or I'm looking, I'm distracted, I'll cut and use track two or track one. So you make sure you have your tracks like this. Then the B-rolls go on top. And then if you have animation and the like, you put them on top of the B-roll. Same thing with audio. You'll start with your main voice, then your voiceover is on a different track. And if you have sound bites, you put them on a different track and then your music on the lowest track. That's usually how I do it. All right, I'm going to show you a project that has multiple camera angles. 
so that I can show you more or less how it's set up. You see here, this is the main camera. So this is the clip here. That's going to be throughout the video, the main camera I'm seeing. But let's say I don't like this. I have camera two over here. And so if I were to hide this screen, there's my other shot. So I always put the video that I like the most on top. So you see I have the first angle of my footage here. Then I put the main angle. This is my audio track that goes with it. On top of it, I have all the slides. Then on top here, I have B-roll. And that's pretty much how it's set up. As you see, the clips have different colors. So these are the colors that are available on your timeline. And so this is what it's doing automatically. If you want to change the colors, you're more than happy to do so here. So your labels here are determining the colors that you have on your timeline. If you want to change a particular color, okay, so let's see. Here I have footage on drone. So let's say I want the drone footage to be in a different color. You come here, label, and I'm gonna make them brown. And then if I have any others, like right here, label brown. Number five, adjust your audio. When you upload clips from a professional camera, you usually have multiple audio tracks attached to it. So you need to modify that audio so you only use the best audio. So as you see, when I uploaded the clip, it brought a whole bunch of stuff I don't need. So a lot of editors would tell you to do uh, audio correction and um, color correction at the end of your edit. I do it in the front and I think it makes more sense. So before I do any of this, I'm going to clean up uh, my audio and it's called modify audio channels. The reason you do that is when you film uh, on a professional camera, you usually have various inputs. You have different microphones uh, that are recording the scene. So in this particular example, as I'm filming myself, I have two microphones on my camera. There is channel one and channel two. I have two different microphones attached. There's this lavalier here and I have a boom mic over there. I know that most of the time the lavalier is the only microphone I'm going to be using in the production. So I'm just going to cut the other mic. But the good thing is if there is ever an issue with the audio, I have a backup. And sometimes if you're filming an event outside, you may want to use some of the sound audio around you. So it's always good to have this track, but you control what you want to bring into the timeline. And I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, so I'm gonna click modify audio channels. So here you have all these channels and you want to test your audio here. You have channel 2, channel 3, and channel 4. So you want to test it here and make sure you know which one is the best quality. Then you pick the one that you want. And then instead of having four channels, since it's just talking head video, I'm just going to make it stereo. One, sorry, one. And then it's going to be channel 2 on both in stereo and then I press OK. And now you only have it on one channel. So you get the best channel for yourself. You decide if you want one or two channels. You definitely don't want it mono, you want it in stereo. So before you drag it into your sequence, make sure you have the best audio set up. Once your audio in, is in the sequence, you want to clean up the audio before you start editing. And I'm going to show you two or three different things that enhance the voice. I come to the audio. I go to the dialogue. 
dynamic, enhance the speech. You want this to be around here, under six for sure. You want it to be between six and 12. That will really make a difference in the quality of your audio. You have to play it by ear. You have to really listen. Like sometimes you have to do a little bit more than that, but that's the very basic. If it's a voiceover, I highly recommend you just come here in the dialogue. This way, the entire video now has the best audio. Make sure you set your levels and your gains so that your audio is at the level you want it to be from the beginning. Number six, color correction. This isn't the final color correction, but I'm starting to tweak a little bit and make sure that it's as close to where I want it to be. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that I do at the beginning. Color correction is really important because it's going to give your clips a much more vivid look to it. You don't want to be stale and dull. Cameras are okay, depending on your camera, it's going to come out differently. I'm sure you're using, you know, white balance from the camera, you're, you know, setting it up the way you need to. But believe me, there's a huge difference. Once you bring it into your editing suite, you can do magic and I've never not used those tools, no matter how good the camera is. Now, since you have your video on the timeline and you haven't cut it yet, it's a really good time to clean up the color. Uh, you want to make sure that it's done prior because once you start cutting, it's gonna be a lot harder to make sure it's all consistent. So I'm gonna come closer to like an area I'm going to go here into color. I'm going to look at the lumetri scope. Okay. So this is the white balance. This is supposed to be white. This is supposed to be white. So you can always come and clean it up a little bit. You see it picked the white. And if you're not happy, you go to another white. Woo! And what it does is it changes a little bit the temperature and the tint to match that white. So this is before and after. I already have a little bit more color on my face, so the white balance is already helping a little bit. Then you usually want to crank your contrast Exposure, I like to bring in the exposure just a little bit to give it a little vibrance. Now you can press auto and it will give you what it thinks is right. And then you can reset to zero, auto, and then you can just change it at your own leisure again. And for that, I like to see better. And so you want to be subtle, but you want your image to be a little bit more vivid. This is before and after. You see the difference? This is dull and gray and not so amazing. And look at the difference. So this will already be set in the entire clip. So now I can start cutting and making my video. So cut, 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 cut. Apple S, save, save all the time. And I also recommend you come here, preferences, auto save, automatically save projects. Every 15 minutes, you can do it more, you can do it less. But if you were to forget to save, at least every 15 minutes, you have a backup of your work. And that's really important. You can save a backup project to Creative Cloud. That's in case you lose your project. And you can auto save the current project as you auto save every 15 minutes. So you can use all of that. Press OK. And now you are on your way to edit. And the way I would start editing is to come here, 
Puf. Cut. I usually like to bring all my assets, my clips, my b-roll and everything else into the timeline. I like to see it, I like to cut it, I like to clean it and then I'll put everything that I want on the very front of the video and start deleting little by little what's in the back. That's the preferred way uh, that I find editing. I don't like to do the in and out into uh, the project itself and then drag it. I prefer to have everything in my timeline. I've done it for years, I like to do it this way and for me it works better. Number seven, titles and graphics. Once you've done your edit, let's say you've spent a couple of hours, you've cut everything, your video is ready to go, now you're going to add a couple of titles, graphics, give it a little bit of jazz, you know, make sure that it has all the information that you need and that's when you do that, a little bit later on in the game. So in order to put together your titles, you can use Photoshop, you can use Illustrator, you can use After Effects, you can do it directly in Adobe uh, Premiere, you can use uh, stock, um, stock footage. Uh, there is a ton of stuff that they offer. Some of it you have to pay for, but there are some good uh, templates that you can use. And that's when you bring everything into your suite and you start adding them into your timeline. All right, so you're working on a video and you're pretty much done. Now all you want to do is to just add a couple of titles and text. Let's say here you want to add some text to the background. You go into graphics and you have a whole bunch of things available here or you go to the Adobe stock and you start looking like text animation and I'll search and then you can look at it. Gives you a variety of things. And you can download these and then use them. So let's say you want to drag here. It's red because you need to render. You can change all of these. You can change the font, you can change the location. Number eight, transitions. All of your cuts can be a little rough. So now that you know that you know, your story is laid out and you know more or less what you're going to say, sometimes you want to add transition, to, you know, to give it a little flair or to make it a little more smooth. You want your edit to be somewhat invisible. Uh, you want the viewer not to be distracted, so you don't want to do a thousand different transitions and drag in everything that's available into your timeline. Most of the time you'll just pick one or two in a particular video that you think match. So when you have a cut between two frames, go to Effects, Video Transitions, and you have a ton of transitions here from 3D Motion, Dissolve, Immerse, Iris, Page Peel, Slide, Wipe and Zoom. This is for another video, but these are all the transitions that are currently available on Adobe Premiere Pro. And so all you do, let's say you want a dissolve between these two clips, you just drag the dissolve and you bring it here. And that will create this really weird dissolve. Now you don't necessarily want to use it for that, so for here you'll use maybe something like that. If it's red, that means it needs to be rendered. So you press an in point and you press enter and it's rendering your files, which means it's making a copy of your file that can be viewed on your timeline. You can use cross zoom. I use that a lot. So you need to render again. And as you can see, this is a little bit slow. So you can grab the sides and squeeze them. You can bring it on one end so that it does one side or you bring it into the other end to let it know where it starts and finishes. This is a little bit short. So 
Yes, uh, you change that. You can double click on it and it gives you the exact duration of the transition. So if you push, that means like that. When you go to effect, it tells you on which side you want to push. You have a lot of details on every one of those transitions. So that's for another video, but this is the time to put transitions between your clips. So you drag your transition into the clip. If it turns red, that means you need to render. So you put an in and out, you press render, you make sure that it goes through its process, and then you look at the transition. If it doesn't feel right, just get rid of it. It's not good. You have a whole bunch of transitions in Premiere Pro, go for it. You can also download some plugins. Number nine, review and render. All right, so now your video is done. You're gonna do it one last look. I usually uh, make sure everything is okay. I render the entire sequence, make sure everything is smooth, and then you look at it. The way I like to do the last review is I either export it or I look at it in a big screen and uh, I don't stop myself to edit anything. I just look at the whole video with a notepad in hand and I take notes and I put the time code number of where the problem is and I know that those things need to be reviewed. At the end, hopefully I don't have too many things because we're now at the very end of the edit, but it gives me a chance to see anything that jumps at me. Sometimes it's really difficult to get out to get away from your own work. So take a few minutes, just go walk around, just let go of that, you know, focus you have on it. Take a breather, go meditate, go do something. When you come back, you wanna have a fresh look. You give it a total look from A to Z, from top to finish. Take notes of anything that jumps out. Go back, edit, finish, render, and you're done, your video is finished. So now you reviewed everything, you made your final edits, you checked it out, you make sure everything is okay, you're done. But you're not done, because now you need to export your video, and that's an animal of its own. And number 10, export your work. And I'm going to show you the settings you need to use to export. Of course, that's going to depend on what you want to do with your video, if you want it uh, best quality final version for yourself, if you want it for YouTube, if you want it for Facebook, if you want 4K, if you want HD, that's when you're going to set up the settings you want to export. All right, so we're gonna remove the in and out. This is the entire video. I have reviewed it, I have checked it out, I have made the final edits. I'm happy with it. Now what? Now I need to export it. In order to export it properly, I need to know what I'm going to do with this video. If I want the top quality video that's exactly the same match without being compressed in any way, that's going to be one setup. If it's for YouTube, it's gonna be a different setup. If it's for Facebook, it's gonna be a different setup. So you come here, export media. And the first thing you do is you come here. Uh, some people like to use sequence in and out. I usually like to clean up my timeline and then I do entire sequence. I'm set up here to H264, but you can do all of these choices here. You can match the sequence settings, that would be like the highest quality you can do if you want to have a full copy for yourself. If you want it to go for YouTube in 4K, this is what you're going to use. But as you can see, you can choose a lot of different settings. You do Vimeo. The reason why those settings change is because each platform uses different compressors and so sometimes they really destroy the quality of your video. So Premiere has set it up so that you have a pretty good uh, export condition in order to upload into these different platforms. Let's say here we're gonna export in 4K. If I click on the output name, it's going to ask me where on the drive I want it to go. So in this case, I'm good, boom. It's going to 
set it in H.264, which is a very good format for online. And then here you can do export, which would export directly from Premiere. You can do that, but if it's a long uh, process, it's usually better to just queue it into the encoder because you won't be able to use Premiere as long as it's exporting. So that's really up to you. But uh, unless it's a one minute video, it's usually gonna take a little bit of time. So the preferred version would probably be to qu click on Q and it's going to open in Media Encoder. And so this is gone. So you can look at the warning. It's missing a font, but I'm not using it, so it's non-issue. So I'm ready to export this. I'm going to go to export here. It's starting the export. I can close this down or minimize it. It's continuing to export, but now I can keep working on Adobe Premiere, which is great, particularly if you're exporting one thing and want to go back. Now, if I were to do the same thing here, file, export, media, but then same thing, entire sequence, and then I use, you know, it's this, it, it automatically creates a copy of the export. Let's say I want to do a different format. Boom. Now I press export. At this point, I cannot do anything. Premiere is locked down. So that's really a different choice. But you know, that's it. Until the export is finished, you can no longer be on Premiere. So that's really the big difference between one and the other. And we're done. So thank you very much for coming back to Katia's Buzz. I hope you really enjoy using Premiere Pro. You're going to do some amazing projects. I guarantee you, do not be afraid. If you just started, it takes time but it's really fun. So if you enjoy editing video, you're going to be a pro in no time. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's a lot of fun. It's awesome. I will see you around. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, press like if you like this video, and please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Today's video was about the video editing workflow in Premiere Pro, and I hope you enjoyed the workflow that I use, that I've used for years. And uh, if you have any other way of doing things, please put them down below in the comments. I would love to know how you do it. And if there is anything better than the way I do it, please share it with me. I'm very excited to see what you have to say because there is no one way, there is no better way. Uh, we all have to figure it out for ourselves. There will be more videos coming with more in detail on all the different aspects of Premiere Pro. This program is really powerful and really intricate and there is a lot to be learned. So make sure you come back to this channel to learn how to use Premiere Pro very well. Have a beautiful day. I will see you around. Subscribe, like and comment. Have fun with your suite. I will see you around.